Hey everybody, welcome to the Arcane Duels League. I'm Koshade and I'm here with Puddinhead. Yo. And we are recording this game um, <clears throat> after the game. We're using the cool Octagon replay feature. And uh, this is going to be a match of uh, between Sir J Jason Crage and uh, Jack Smack. Um, Jack Smack, returning champion from ADMW. Uh, really curious to see how his plays are going to be, just because he hasn't been around since a lot of the new sets came out. Um, I don't know, Putin, do you want to talk about, you know, how how these this matchup uh, you think is going to work? Well, to, for starters, um, the league format is different from a regular tournament format. What we are doing in this league is you know your opponent and which mage they have chosen to bring before the game starts. Um, so you are actually able to tailor your book to fight a certain mage in this format. Uh, so they both players uh, submitted what mage they were going to be playing before they knew anything. And then once they figured out what the other person was playing, they got the chance to build their book accordingly. Um, so in that in mind, the Warlock is going to know that Poison Blood and Ghoul Rot are not going to work. And the Necromancer is going to know, I better watch out for fire. So in those situations, you just have all these second guessing and trying to figure out what the other person's going to bring and all that stuff. Um, so in a regular matchup like this, I would say that a few good fireballs can turn the tide in the favor of the warlock. Um, but that if he gets surrounded by zombies, he's going to die. Uh, <laughs> however, we don't know what these people have done with their books, knowing what they're going to fight. So the warlock could have brought a whole bunch of dissolves to get rid of a bunch of fire protection knowing that the opponent is not going to have they're not necessarily going to have a lot of those but going to have a few of them hmm. um or it could have just brought some explodes right and absolutely get, get some damage with that alternatively the warlock could know that he's fighting a necromancer and he could bring some non-living stuff so that brutes don't do damage right mm -hmm. um the necromancer has a lot to worry about, I think, because a lot of the Necromancer's power comes in anybody built to deal with a normal tournament setting where there are lots of different mages has fewer points to put to specifically counter a Necromancer, right? So Absolutely. the Necromancer has to know, well, I've got to deal with this because he knows I'm a Necromancer, so he's going to bring Necromancer counters and I better have something that I can do. Yeah, that absolutely. That will yeah. surprise him and put him off of his game. So what do you think, my man? Well, um, let, let's talk about the really quick, what happened turn one here. Uh, two mana flowers out here for Sir Jason Crage, uh, putting his mana channel up to 11. It looks like Jack going to go for the, um, the battle forge opener, which is, you know, not necessarily super unique, but kind of unique for Necro. And mm -hmm. the Priest of Abenek, um, one of the new Necromancer cards. Maybe the first time ever used in a tournament. Um, <clears throat> and, um, you know, mummies have all sorts of very unique abilities. And honestly, clerics are kind of like that super-powered support subtype. And this one's no different um, in the sense that, it, you know, it, it could basically deal damage and heal things at the same time, So including itself. So it's kind of cool right. to, to be able to heal undead yeah and it comes damage, off but... it comes into the gate out of the gate with uh kind of a cheap cost for a lot a uh, decent amount of health and an armor yeah yeah I mean, six mana for one armor six life is actually pretty good um so so i mean like uh you know it's one of those things that as as jason you look at this opening and you're saying there's no graveyard no libro you know what am i fighting here um i mean it's it's clearly not an opening where they're yeah. like, I'm going to get out a brute, turn two, and then just get tons of brutes, and you have to deal with that. You know what I'm expecting right now? Mm. Since the Warlock brought mana flowers, I would love to see a Meridia's Blessing play. <laughs> that would actually because be really interesting for his that demons. Would, that yeah. would really <laughs> keep your demons up and, and poison-free and oh, yeah. all sorts of things. Like You could definitely get an edge bringing a meridia's blessing against a necromancer Abs absolutely that that would be hilarious 
Um, and yeah, it's four spellbook points, but I mean, the value you can get once the engagement happens. So your your guys are just automatically regenerating stuff, and mm-hmm. the necromancer stuff is constantly dying and has to rely on resilient or armor or, I guess he could be bringing skeletons and and reassemble. But so I mean, yeah. like, there's a whole bunch of new cards in in the game right now that we haven't really seen, and seeing a battle forge go down. And seeing in how the Necromancer expansion had a five dice base attack sword in it, um, I am almost wondering right away, looking at this base state, is are we going to see some sort of, you know, melee necro go down? Um, <clears throat> well, he's definitely planning to get armor on because I don't think anybody brings oh, yeah. a battle forge without planning <laughs> to do a bunch of armoring up. Yeah, I, we I would agree. See, we do see the Enchanter's Ring come out here. Um, which is odd to me for a necromancer, right? Yeah, uh, there's not a lot I'm of not, friendly, yeah, right? Yeah, not a lot of stuff is going to hit friendly creatures. So um, maybe he's planning to just super enchant his necro? <laughs> right? Like, that's totally what I'm thinking, too. And like, as I said, there's a bunch of new cards that sort of benefit the necro or dark mages a lot. So I kind of wonder what's going on there. Um, necromancer choosing... advancing here. Not usually what you see. I uh, know he takes it back. Oh, he takes it back. Okay, fine. <laughs> now, uh, the Priest of Abenek is advancing. Now, one thing to note about the mummies is they are not slow or lumbering or anything. They are regular old creatures. They're also not bloodthirsty, so you cannot manipulate their attacks that way. Um, interesting positives versus negatives there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, they're like skeletons, but they can sort of combo in a different way. Than what we're used right. to seeing. Uh, Enchanter's Ring already having some effect. And the Idle Pestilence goes down. Um, so Jax Mac declaring, I want this game to end, and this is going to put the timer on your mage. Um, and, then the, and then an aggressive Battle Forge out of Jason Grage. Wow. Okay. I don't think I'm there yet. Uh oh. Right, Do you want to like time to it? Are you are you on one X? Or hang on a second. We'll we'll pause it when we get on turn three. Let I'll me know see. when you're on turn three. Initiative is okay. <clears throat> yeah. So aggressive battle forge here. Um, that indicates that Jason he thinks that he's gonna get some sort of edge. Turn I three think. initiative. All right, let's play here. Um, that he thinks. Okay, well, you're gonna get out something, and I need to be aggressive with it. Because why else would you just place your battle forge straight up? In your opponent's face, you know, you have sort of uh, the dueling of the Battle Forges right next to each other here. Um, hmm. I wonder if he's not expecting water spells from a Necromancer? It's, it's possible, yeah. I mean, it's also possible that Jason, he's, he's kind of one of those players that doesn't necessarily care if his Battle Forge dies, I think. I don't know. Generally speaking, if you bring a battle forge, you want it to do some yeah, stuff. Yeah, obviously, yes. Right. <laughs> I just find that Jason tends to have uh, aggressive tactics when they're like, when he finds himself in like an edge. Um, so like if Jack Smack spent mana with uh, surging waves or, or swells, he'd probably be like, "I'm going to go offensive now." I guess I don't know. I could be wrong there. Uh, Idol of Pestilence is kind of an indicator that. Uh, Jack Smack wants to get some bloodthirsty off. Yeah, I agree with that. So I, if I were Sir Jason, I would be preparing for a zombie brute this turn. I mean, zombie brute is in general just good. Like even if they've like prepped for it, it's still probably gonna be more than its its weight in mana in what it does. So I I think it's a solid choice as well to prep for that. All right, but you have to know that. Um, you're as an as you know you're fighting a necromancer he has to have some stuff in his book that is counter zombies right oh yeah oh you have to man because if you don't then you're just deciding to lose the game on to, the matchup to be fair i i actually wonder if jack smack also needs to think about zombie brute because uh you know it can do just as much damage back to the necro yeah, I mean, but if it's non-living versus non-living, then the Necro is going to be able to pump them out faster mm-hmm. and guard with them, right? So, I don't know. I don't know if he's actually that worried about a zombie brute. Well, Jack makes that 15 mana. 
Um, Jason's at 21, one of the Battle Forge for each of them. So um, clearly they're both waiting their hand, I think, to, to make their actual plays be known. You know, we have a bunch of very minor sort of um, economy plays, some unrevealed enchantments. I think the idol is probably the biggest indicator of something. Mm. <laughs> but even that's yeah. sort of like, you know, just generically good, I guess, you know? Right. Why Why do you think he cast a cleric first? Uh, well, Altar of Skulls is one of the first reasons that I think when you get a cleric out for a dark yeah, mage... That's, you've kind of been... You've probably been seeing a lot of that recently. Uh, Altar of Skulls is one of those spells that, like, since we have more clerics now, and especially since we can get tons of different clerics from other schools um, because of uh, Embalmed, you know, it, it sort of opens up the possibilities over, you know, what you can do to get that. Um, but, you know, with mummies, I mean, there's the rot mummy. You can make any other creature a mummy. It's possible he might be thinking... You know, if you dark pack Slayer or something, I want that as a mummy so I can support it. Um, and then the cleric can keep it alive. Yeah. I mean, also, I mean, yeah. I mean, the Priest of Abenek is just kind of good stats-wise, honestly. Like, it's not going to die in one hit. And if you spend six mana to deflect it probably two to three hits and get some damage out, it's not bad, you know? Yeah. It's not going to guard and use its ability, though. Yeah, no, that's true. Um, I noticed, I didn't realize this before, but Priest of Abenic can damage the Necromancer. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's it's just any creature. It's living. Any living creature. Yeah, so it's, I don't know. I guess it's sort of one of those, maybe he's trying to fake Jason out. Maybe he's got a grander scheme. But uh, and now that we're seeing an aggressive Battle Forge... It's possible Jack's going to abandon something because of that. Um, just because it is turn three, and it's possible Jason can... It's possible he can melee this round. Yeah, it's true. He could definitely run in there and melee uh, if he has a cheetah speed on or... Um, Even a lesser teleport, something like that. You know, if he has a yep. bear strength on, he puts on a lash. Like, I that's... Ring of Curses. Okay, so this is probably not going to be melee. Um... This is one of those turns that I think if you're a dark mage and you see someone this close to you, you probably want to do Cloak of Shadows. But uh, no. We both of them flip in armor. Ah, uh, Rhino Eye gets revealed. So he was saying, okay, you're probably going to have a Seeking Dispel. I'm just going to reveal this now. I like that plan. So Jason's up to two armor. <clears throat> Jax Max at two. And uh, um, we're into... That looks like a curse. We're into main actions. The first curse goes down. Most likely a curse. Uh, Mage main. Good choice. Good choice. And this is kind of one of those things that it's very rare Mage main doesn't pay off. Um, so, I mean, honestly, with Mage main... Like wow. I, I usually only run one, but running two to three actually makes sense in a lot of ways. Two curses looks like goes down to the necro. Uh, one of them being a mage bane, of course. <laughs> They're just mage baning each other. I love the art for mage bane, by the way. And a chains of agony gets down. Um, chains of agony is one of those usually counters brutes, or it doesn't counter, but does some damage. Um, but in general, it's just kind of a good curse. So that indicates to me that he doesn't want Jack Smack to move very much, um, which could mean a whole bunch of other things. Yeah, Lash of Hellfire play yep. or something slow. Yep. Um, it looks like a, another enchantment going down in this uh, Necromancer here. And uh, this not is... Triggering, not triggering Enchanter's Ring for some reason. Huh. Yeah, I don't know what, what's up with that. But... Um, all right. Hmm. Priest of Amanek moves up to the corner and guards. That's suspicious. Is he going to put something there that needs guarding? Yeah, like you would think you'd go to the bottom to guard the idol if you wanted to guard something, but that makes you think maybe he's going to plant something up here. Hmm. So we got two mage banes. And a change of agony. Yep. 
Yep, yep. This is clearly some sort of um, some just, sort of insult duel. Yeah, this cursing, is <laughs> cursing at each other. <laughs> Curses. Guys, I I don't know if I've ever actually appreciated the Mage Bane art, but it looks something like out of like '90s Magic: The Gathering. Um, I dig it. <laughs> well, it is it is from 2012, right? Yeah, Before. it's it's one of the original art. Um, it's cool. I like it. And it uh, looks like we're going to the next phase here. So Jack's Max is going to go up to uh, looks like four from the idol. And are we going to see a regrowth out of Jack Smack? Jack Smack shouldn't take idle damage. Oh, sorry. Uh, Jason should go up to four. Um, but Jack Smack, maybe a regrowth? Th He's only got one damage. I don't think it's worth it right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not really sure how much Jack cares about getting that on early, to be fair. I have to say, I I, I think that this, uh, this play is like super interesting out of jack um no spawn point just playing this weird curse equipment game uh i don't know what he's doing you know <laughs> like yeah you, it could be argued that he's not even using half of his mages bonuses right yeah like, like the fact that the necromancer can have up to two spawn points up to two creature spawn points and he's just not choosing to cast mm -hmm. any creatures whatsoever it could be construed as doing it wrong <laughs> yeah and it's it's possible that because of this tournament he has to play this way because he knows that oh man i can't be countered that way if i play funky maybe it'll work out sure then whenever i watch jack play i always think he's doing something funky and it always like seems to work out for him in the admw so you know i i love watching jack play just because he's such a unique player in comparison to how how i play at least um it's nice to see different styles for it's, sure. It's cool. Um, so it looks like we're not going to see. He's been playing wizard for a long time, right? Is that his mage, his main deal? Yeah, yeah. I think we've seen him play a lot of other mages, obviously because of ADMW. But um, I think wizard's kind of his big mage, if I remember right. Sir so Jason's big mage is the warlock, right? Um, I mean, I think it could be argued that blood wave is probably what he plays the most. Oh, okay. Um. I always thought he was the warlock I, player. I mean, honestly, I, I've seen him play both. You're probably right on that, though, on warlock being his main or his, or tied with blood wave. I'm sure he'll correct me. <laughs> well, yeah, everybody's welcome to tell us we're wrong in the comments. Exactly. Please do. <laughs> but uh, yeah, it's it's hard to tell what's going to happen at this point. I mean. Sir Jason has four times as much damage as Jack Smack, but that's not saying much when it's four to one. Yeah, I agree. Right? I mean, simple regrowths, you know, can balance this out very quickly. Um, I mean, the big question now is, you know, you knew you were facing a Dark Mage. Did you risk taking Remove Curse? You know, stuff like that. Yeah, did you did you plan for the Curse game? Yeah. Yeah. Um, because that's what I think about when I think Dark Mages, is there's a whole aspect of just curses. Um, interesting enough, like, Purge actually becomes weird in this in this scenario. Because you wouldn't want to purge either player, because they're both buffing themselves and cursing each other. Sure. So probably, like, uh, Arcane Corruption. Mm. Probably, like, one of the best choices you can have in terms of, like, I mean, how to deal with... As a Dark with... Mage anyway, you'd want to run Arcane Corruption over Purge, I think. Yeah, I agree with that. But, I mean, if you're trying to get rid of stuff on you, Arcane Corruption doesn't work. Yeah. So. I I typically run both, personally, but that's because I'm terrified of fatigue builds, even though people don't really run them anymore. But, um, because Remove mm -hmm. Curse and Purify kind of, you know, stomp that out a lot. But it's still, it's still tough sometimes, man. Oh, well, we do see the Libro coming out. I love the Libro. Uh, I know a lot of people don't like it because Graveyard is actually a really good spawn point, but I think Libero freaking rocks. Against a Dark Mage, it's a little problematic uh, just because I feel like there's a specific spell that's used against things that are level 3 and up equipment. All right, we're seeing a Dispel Wand come out for Sir Jason. Yeah, this is something that, you know, you see, you don't see a lot of. 
Uh, just sure. because it's 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 too. I mean, you could take two dispels for the cost of the spell wand. <laughs> and Jack Smack was ready for that. Yeah, Enchanter's Wardstone. I'll talk about dispel one later. So I love this play out of Jack. Just going, I'm going to Wardstone because I think you're going to start countering my stuff because Mage Bane gets countered immediately, or you don't. That's kind of what you do. Um, so it looks like Jack's going to take his Mage Bane, going up to two damage. And are we in... Yep, we're in the action phase then. Yep, I got action phase here. So let's see what Jack chooses to do. Probably use this mummy, is my guess. Yep. Alright, All right. he just regards in the corner. Hmm. He's not even bothering to protect the wardstone. Yeah, and Jack's at one mana, so he can't cast anything up there. So I'm wondering why he chose to move up here like this. Gonna see a ritual of Kalek. <laughs> Alright. And it is on Jason. He's got 18 mana, so we can do a bunch of stuff here. We could see a creature. Yeah, I, I want to know what he's gonna do with that mana. Like we I saw anything We yet. saw a dispel one, so that indicates to me that he wants to you know get rid of stuff. Uh, he's gonna advance. All right, he's gonna take okay. a damage to yeah, get gonna, rid of the mage main. He's gonna get rid of his mage main. Mm, he's not gonna advance. He doesn't know how aggressive he wants to be here. He's gonna double yeah. move. <laughs> Whoa! Interesting double move here. He's probably debating this wardstone if he wants to pay mana to remove it. Uh, the mage main, that is. Well, he's putting himself into Jack Smack's zone. And he has two armor, so probably Jack Smack can't do much damage to him. Well, you never know. Those necromancers, they might bust a move here. <laughs> Alright, he's got another enchantment going down, and he can actually do that by paying one mana using the ring. Love the move here at Jack Smack. Um... My guess is it's a regrowth. I'm going to keep saying that until it comes out because that's probably one of the more common enchantments for Necro. Then again, regrowth belt is a thing. Okay, so he's going to dispel his Mage Bane with the Spell Wand, taking a damage and spending an extra two mana because of the Wardstone. Yep. Page up the uh, Warlord here, or Warlock. Oh, there it goes. <clears throat> Turn five, initiative. We're going to see it be Sir Jason's initiative, and I don't know what he's going to do with 20 mana and one on the forge. <laughs> I mean, he can be as, as as aggressive or not aggressive as he wants. Um, well, the, the idol is giving him a clock, right? Yep. So he needs to do something that will get the clock off of him, so a regrowth of some kind, or he needs to start pressuring the necromancer because right now the necromancer doesn't have any threat really except for the idol yeah it's just and passively doing stuff yeah i'm just i'm not sure that's a good thing <laughs> you know what i mean yeah i mean jack's only at 10 mana right now one in the battle forge so hey, he can't even here we go okay um and yeah i, I think this is a really typical play out of necros and that is just get the regrowth on early um especially when you deal with mage bane really any mage regeneration with mage bane is how you counter it if you don't want to dispel it um that being said there's one man on the libro then and jack has six mana now because it revealed that regrowth uh versus jason's 22 one of the battle for each of them I mean, honestly, I, I kind of wonder if just a lash out of Jason and just start hitting stuff is appropriate here. Yeah, I mean, he could hit the, the Necromancer really easily. There's nothing protecting him. Yep. He's got he's got just... two armor on the dragon, so you'd have to blow that up or dissolve it or something, but that's not that big of a deal. I mean, or you could just um, Forful Blade. Just yeah. start slicing, and you get five dice. I mean, honestly, I think that new blade would actually help here, too. Uh, the vampire one. That's true. Because he, he would lose some health to do that, so he'd want to yeah. cast a, a 
what's it? Uh, bear strength and then bear strength. Yep. Recoup some of that damage. But yeah, yeah, I agree I, with that. I like that idea because the Vorpal Blade helps with the Idol of Pestilence too. I mean, you get through that armor. Absolutely. Not that there's a lot of it, but yeah, that's the question. Do you take out the uh, Idol or not? And I think, I mean, it's always tough, right? Because it has eleven life. Um, I probably would take it out. Just because, well, I guess by the time you take it out, you're going to deal with the Libra then. But you're probably I mean, going to be ready to. both so. this turn. Um, honestly, he could yeah. dissolve the Libro That's and fair. then go punch the... Uh, even if he, if he equips the Lash, yeah. he could even equip the Lash, dissolve the Libro, <laughs> oh my God, so and true. then go hit the Idol with five dice and a burn chance. Yeah, and Jack only has six mana, so he's probably not bringing out a big dude from that Libro. You know, so... Right. You can deal with a maybe what not not even a skeletal century I don't think um, no. with seven. All mana. you can do is a um, either a crawler, a zombie minion, a skeletal minion, another priest of Abenek. Um Yeah, I don't think there's much else that you, you can I, do there. Let me think here. The century is what eight. I guess what he could do is he could. No, he can't do that. Yeah, no, you're right. It's just that's how it is. And he still has the battle for it to think about, too. So, you know, ideally right now he's thinking, okay, this warlock's clearly being aggressive. I need to get something out to deal with that. I'm not sure if a creature here is necessarily the right call. Or bluffing a creature. If bluffing a be. creature is not yeah. a good idea either, because if you lose that Libra, oh, you lose geez. the creature. That's so true. I mean, unless one of his spells is nullify on himself, which is entirely possible. Yeah, I mean, so basically, I think both mages are in a weird spot. Like, Jason has a ton of mana, so I think he's in a better spot to deal with stuff. But I, I think uh, Jack probably needs to start attacking with this priest just because it needs to do something, you know? Yeah, it's very odd that it's doing nothing. Like, I kind of wonder if it was just attacking the Battleforge. Like how this board would look different right now. I mean, at this juncture, he could choose to use the priest's action to run over and start beating on the mana flowers. It won't make a whole lot of progress. <laughs> That's funny, yeah. <laughs> two dice versus a regeneration flower, but... Yeah, I suppose it's just... We're going to have to wait and see how Jason reacts to see how this priest goes in. I, I'm i still questioning what the point of the priest is. Yeah. I mean, wouldn't it have been better to get something with three dice or more armor or... Yeah, like he's just kind of standing I don't know. Hmm. Yeah, this is going to be a big planning phase, and I don't think it's surprising. It's, it's kind of one of those, like, are we going to clash yet? You know, we're all standing next to each other, so... Hmm. And the other question is: Is Jack Smack? Does Jack Smack think that that dispel wand is a threat? Like, is he going to get rid of it? Oh, if he has more it's, mage veins, yeah. Yeah, it's four spellbook points. It might be worth a dissolve. So, dispel the wand. Um, let's talk about it really quick because it's an interesting card that you know you don't see a lot, uh, but I think everybody considers at some point. It's level two arcane, so theoretically you could take two dispels with it. Uh, but it only destroys level one enchantments and reveal enchantments and uh, it's zero to one range. So it's kind of worse than a dispel, but you have to make your opponent react to it. So it's good in that way. Um, I don't know. What are your, uh, what are your opinions on it? I am not sure. Honestly. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I think that the hand slot is, kind of important yeah especially for a mage that has melee one as one of his abilities mm -hmm. uh so i'm not sure it's that great of an idea to have a dispel wand at the same time a dispel wand means that you don't have to prepare a dispel every turn right yeah right you just kind of have it all right we see a skeletal minion coming out um the uh, no, the dispel so wand is is nice because they have to deal with it, and often, I, I mean, I would hope that you get two dispels out of it before. Ooh, he's gonna dis. Oh, he's cursing the Libro. 
Ooh, interesting. Yeah, and this is kind of what I think that card was made for. This is probably a curse item. Um, and it well, is... Yeah, I don't know it's a curse, but, I mean, why it... wouldn't it be curse yeah, item? Yeah, right? I mean, it's just kind of perfect against Libro. It's probably, like, one of your prime targets. Um, just because it's expensive, you don't want to lose it, and you don't have to spend as much mana to, to make the opponent feel like that, whereas they spent a ton of mana for it. You um, can also curse item the Hallberg at the same time, right? Uh, yeah, you can curse any item as many times as you want because you're cursing that object, not the same object. Right. That could be a lot of damage really fast or a lot of dead yeah. equipment. Oh, yeah. Necro's going to spend his action. He only has two mana. So let's see what this quick is going to be. And there's a... There is a... He spends all his mana. Um, so that's going to be probably some curse. That he can't reveal right he now. He can't reveal, yeah. Oh, he's passing. I mean, it could be now something. Here comes the priest to get some damage in. Okay, and this is, I think, a good choice. Uh, now Jason's at three armor, so it's probably not going to do too much damage, but it's worth a try. Generating right. dice rolls gets one. Yeah, you're a little bit ahead of me. Um, getting one through. I mean, that's kind of the best you can hope for. In terms of like expectations, I mean, you can obviously expect four crit, but um, didn't we start these at the same time? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Why is one faster? Than I have one? no idea. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I mean, I mean, the priest got one damage, which you know, again, this is a six mana creature. You know, getting a damage out of it, it's something, you know. So, what do you think is going to... Now, hmm, I'm curious here. I want to see what, what Jason's doing here. Interesting that he chose Ooh. Skeletal Minion, by the way. Um, just because it's not going with the mummy theme. Yeah, well, I think skeletons and mummies worked well together. Oh, they do. Together, so oh, no I doubt. Would, I would totally try that if I were doing it, I think. Um... <clears throat> And he also did an Eternal Servant, the Skeleton. Interesting note. Uh, so Magma Golem. Uh, this is something that I think is... I mean, Jason might be the only player that I've seen really trying Magma Golems out in their games. Um, I think we've all well, I think we've all played it. It's just... I've really is, seen Jason do this a lot. And I like it, actually. Yeah, this is the perfect counter to zombies, interestingly enough. Absolutely it is. Uh, so it looks like Jason was expecting zombies. Yeah, I'd agree with that. Uh, that might be why he seems to be playing this cautious, because he might be waiting for that. Uh, Necromancer is going to just punch the Warlock in the face, dealing one damage, getting four da da uh, four damage out of three dice, but one going through. And it looks like he's going to add that burn. Right. So Beginning of each upkeep phase, place a burn condition on Magma Golem. Okay. So basically, Magma Golem here... It was a really interesting choice for Jason, just because it's going to hurt his mage as well. Um, in this case, I think we're going to probably start seeing Jason maneuver himself so that he doesn't keep getting hurt. But um, mm. I really think... Uh, curse item gets revealed on that Libro. I really think no. Jason needs to figure out how he can start either healing or dealing with this damage he's taking every round, because he might take two, three damages round. Yeah, uh, I... This upkeep, I mean... The other trick with this is he probably is not planning to rely on anything vampiric this game. I could see that. Jack Smack revealing Gorot. Uh, that is not level one, so he's going to have to use something other than the Dispel mm -hmm. Wand on it. Um, so let's see. Curse item on the Libro. Gorot on the Warlock. So this is everyone's taking more damage now every upkeep. Um, oh, the Mega Golem's burn got to remove. It's, it's always sad. <laughs> oh, you know, man. you want his ability to work. Uh, even if you're going to lose to it, I would love to see the ability to work. But uh, regardless, it didn't. Um, that being said, Jason's going to go up to 11 damage now because that Gulrat with the idol, um, Jack yeah. Smack, essentially doing almost a third of the damage he needs just off passive abilities. Um, Jack Smack going up to two damage, then he regenerates two, so he's at two. He's up to four. Um, man, this is this is a crazy game. I mean, Magma Golem. Now that he's on the field, 
uh he can sort of just not one shot these little dudes but he can definitely do one shot burn himself and then kill them during upkeep um yeah that's true i, I would if i were jason at this point i'd work on getting some health back yeah i, I agree were, with that um, jack smack at this point i i think i'd poison blood and dis yep. and dissolve oh yeah i think Poison Blood and Dissolve seems like the best choice for him. Keep stacking on. Four mana. Yeah, because he revealed Gura. So he can't do both of those <laughs> things. <laughs> I guess he could. Let's see. It's his initiative. So ideally, he dissolves this round. And then next round. Oh, geez, that doesn't work well. Um, yeah, that's that's rough, man. I mean, Jack is playing it really loose with his mana. Uh, I mean, it's kind of paying off with that 11 damage. Yeah, how much of that is... Well, I guess he's he's doing the curse game, so... Yeah. I mean, a dissolve on the wand, if you're playing to play the curse game, is probably the right move. I agree with that. Um, I think I would start guarding with the skeletal minion, maybe. Ah, uh, what would you guard? Guard? Yeah, what would you... Uh, uh, I'd guard the necro. Guard the necro? Yeah, because the last thing you want to do is take damage... Right, I mean, yeah. right now the regrowth is dealing with the mage bane, mm -hmm. and if you don't have to move, then you don't have to deal with the chains of agony. Right. Ah, okay, yeah, that's a good point. So, and if the priest takes damage, he can start healing himself, uh, or if the skeletal minion dies too quickly, you can start guarding with the priest too. Yeah, I mean, so, you, also with the priests, you can get past guards with his ability. So you don't even have to trigger guards if they right. try to guard each other like, or, or something like that, which I, I dig. Yeah, his ability is only going to put one damage out, but when you've already got a ghoul rot and there's no healing going yeah. on like that, and you've already got Idol of Pestilence, like that's that's four damage around. Yeah, I mean, clearly Jack is playing the long game here, and that's sort of what the priest is doing. Just that long game, I'm going to deal a damage to you sort of thing. I would love to see Jack Smack get some sort of poison condition out on uh, Sir Jason. Mm. Like if he could get a curse of weakness down um, and put a weak on during mm -hmm. the upkeep and then and then ping him. Oh yeah. Um, I think that would that would work out well. the The issue is um, the curse item and the mage bane might outpace his regrowth pretty soon. Man, so, I don't know if he should keep that Libro. I almost think taking the three damage is more worth it than keeping it around. Just because he's playing such a low mana game right now. Um, right. If he's, I guess I don't know his book. If he's going to keep cursing and doing things like the Poison Blood, I think he should just drop the Libro, maybe pay the, th the three life, get it back, or let it go, and then just continue playing your game as normal. Because you'll probably save more damage in the long run. Then again, if he goes down to zero damage, his regrowth is doing nothing, then, you know, then it's not as worth it. And that might be why yeah. he's not doing much yeah. with it. You it's... could also guard as the Necromancer. Yep. Um, yeah. Interesting enough, because the Magma Golem is going to do minus two di di dice of damage to you. Oh, yeah. That's true. Hmm. I like that, actually. Now, you, you the point of the game is to kill the mage, so that might not be too wise. <laughs> but... <laughs> I mean, at some um, point in time, you just kind of, as the golem, I'm sure you just punch yourself just to be like, more burns, you know what I mean? Um, I mean, I'd punch the Necromancer, personally. Would you? With, even well, with I mean, the you, dragon? You still, you still have a 9-up chance to That's true. burn. Two dice, 9-up, so you'll probably do one damage, maybe, and maybe a burn. Yeah, I mean, if you get a damage through, and then you automatically get a burn during the upkeep, Whatever. Yeah, I mean, it, it's kind of an interesting game here to for Magma Golem, and that is how many burns ideally do you want on him? You know? Like, do you want as many as possible, or do you want to, like, save his armor? Um, I think he's there to be a punching bag and kill things that are trying to yeah. punch him, personally. Makes sense. I mean, he's expensive. It, it makes sense. And if you really want to, you can drop um, a Dark Pact. No, Dark Pact Slayer doesn't work. You can drop uh, a Flaming Hellion and just mm. guard. Yeah, that's true. And then the Flaming Hellion doesn't take burn damage from the mm. Magma Golem and absorbs the attacks directed at the Magma Golem. Yep. But that's 13 mana that Sir Jason doesn't have right now. 
Uh, and if you're planning to use Magma Golem and you're planning for Brutes, I would expect that he would plan to have lots of armor and to have a way of healing himself. Yeah, I agree with that. Some way to keep himself out of the... Uh... I mean, he probably has tons of agonies, I imagine, just because they're good against Brutes. I mean, maybe he doesn't, I don't know. But, um... I mean, I kind of wonder if he has things like Pillar of Righteous Flame and just stuff like that. Well, I, mean, I mean, Jason has both, 40. They cards. could both theoretically have it, right? <laughs> right, absolutely. Although, I, the, uh, yeah, because it's plus versus non-living, right? Yep. It's not It's not you plus get, versus dark. It's plus get, versus non-living. Yep, you get six so. extra dice versus, versus non-living. So it's super nice. So I wouldn't be surprised if the Necromancer didn't have it because a lot of the Warlocks creatures are living. Both mages going up in additional armor here. Are they both put boots on? They both put boots. <laughs> um, which, you know, it's an interesting choice to do boots just because um, Eagle Claw is such a big, big deal, I think, when you verse dark mages. Um, <clears throat> just because of Bone Wall? I mean, as a Necromancer, I, I like Eagle Claw boots, but... Um, you know, I it's I guess you're probably not going to see much wallage out of. I mean, you might out, Jason. I don't actually know. So we see the uh, dispel wand get dissolved in the quick cast. So Jax has zero mana now. Um, so he's probably planning on doing more level one curses. Is my is my uh, thinking here? Or he doesn't want his regrowth to be dissolved or dispelled. Yeah, that and that could happen. We're going to see a guard in this idol here. Um, he might be trying to get out of this magma from doing too much damage. Um, or he just wants to make sure this idol is protected. So attack the priest of Abnak. Interesting. Not the priest. He's unholy. Huh. Um, so we're going to see four dice here. One armor. Uh, should do round three. It does two. Um, no yeah. burn. A little bit unfortunate. But, you know, it's it's within that realm. Um, so that two damage now means that the priest can start healing it. Which, you know, if you're gonna He's gonna do it right away. <laughs> if you're gonna punch if you're gonna punch the uh the warlock here, you're probably gonna do one damage anyway, so you might as well heal another damage on top of it. Not healing, remove probably damage. gonna probably gonna do zero damage. Yeah, right. If you don't get a crit, yeah. it's done. You got a one third chance of doing damage. Yeah, with two dice. I guess you could get two twos. I guess. Yeah, two right. regular twos would do it. But I, I no, think it was it because he's at four armor. Yeah. So you have to crit in order to damage. Yep. So it's way better to just do. You don't actually. You don't have to have damage on your mummy to do that. No, you, you can just, just do it. One direct yeah. damage. Yep. Um. So I mean, that was just a solid choice, I think, for Jason. Or I'm sorry, for Jack. I think it just kind of shows off why this creature is kind of cool. Um. Intenders Wardstone getting punched. What is this? Four dice. Nope. He's choosing not to. I don't blame him. I mean, four four armor. Hmm. Well, it's four armor versus three armor at this point, and looks like didn't didn't matter what he was going to attack. Honestly, have done anything. yeah, I think attacking the Wardson would have been better personally, just because you know he's playing a curse game and you're going to want to deal with those probably, or maybe he just wants to deal damage. I don't know. It's possible that the fact that we saw him target the Wardstone, then the Necro, he hasn't decided what he wants to do. Um, yeah, because like Wardsons are one of those things that feel like they live forever, they die immediately. You know what I mean? Right. I mean, an upheaval is a really good choice against oh, yeah. Wardstone because oh, it yeah. costs you four mana and done. Absolutely. Right. You don't have to waste attacks on it. So true. Yeah. Um, looks like we're gonna see a Necro try to punch, and he punches right into leather, or a rhino hide, which is like leather. Yep. Regardless, is doing zero, zero damage. <laughs> zero damage, a, a lot of zero damage though. He, he actually pretty close to doing damage. He actually rolled really well too, getting getting one above. Um, we got a magma. He's going to lesser teleport himself out of there. He doesn't want to take damage. I don't blame him for this. All right. And this golem is going to sit here and give off heat. Hmm. I, I, he really needs to be able to deal with that idol of pestilence, though. 
whether by putting a regrowth on or by putting oh, yeah. uh, by killing it. I mean, that's he's going to take tons of damage. And he's going to take another three during upkeep. So he's going to be at 15. Yikes, man. Yeah. No, yeah, he's taking lots of damage right now. And that's that's taking him from one-third health to two-fifths health, you know. Mm -hmm. And Jax, of course, is going to stay at three um, with that regrowth canceling out the curse item. I still am questioning if he should keep Weaver or not. Well, he didn't use it this round. I'll then again, he uses it next round. He's not taking too much damage, so I can understand why he's keeping it. You know, because, again, there's no point in going down to zero and then regrowth doing nothing and you lost Libro, but... You know what? Know. I'm just noticing that Jack Smack has chosen to bring Battleforge and Enchanter's Wardstone, both of which are flame immune. Ah, that's interesting. Huh. I wonder if that's why he built the book the way he did. I like that. That's really interesting to me. Um... Hmm. And of course, Dragon Scale as well. Well, yeah, you don't bring dumb armor to a warlock fight, right? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> right. Absolutely. I wouldn't be surprised to see an elemental cloak come out next. Honestly. Yeah, I mean that would be a that'd also be really good. An elemental cloak and another uh, that would just a minion or something that would just shut down, you know, the chances of a whip doing enough damage and stuff like that. And this uh, magma golem would do nothing. On its, it, its best move would just be punch himself and try to get direct damage during upkeep. Yeah. Uh, speaking of that, let's see if anything happens with this burn here. Eh? Jack, move on with your phase. Move on with your yeah, phase. I have, I have found it kind of difficult to get used to this new system. Yeah, it's... I've only played one game, so that's not saying a whole lot, I guess, but... the uh, It reminds me of how Octagon was when we first... When I first started playing on it, actually. Um, back when you have to go through all the phases and the automation mm. wasn't there. Sort of did a reverse. Alright, so... Ooh, damage burn. Nice. Okay, so the priest is going to go up to three. Necromancer is going to go up to, um, looks like, five. Interesting. Magma Golem is taking burn damage. Yeah, you'll see Jason just move it somewhere. Which, you know, is fine. So Jack Smack is going to go up to five, and this priest is going to go down to half health. Yep. And the uh, Magma Golem is probably going to try and <laughs> kill that thing this turn. Jack, what now? Doesn't know how automation works, which is fair because uh, Magma Golem's played so rarely. Yeah, it would be nice to have it automated, but it's uh, probably going to be one of those corner cases where you have to yeah, say, I... like, if if Magma Golem and Burn equals yeah. true or something like that, then. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if people wanna, that are coding this want to spend their time doing that. So. But if you play a Magma Golem, you got to be on the lookout for that sort of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. So Jack Smack's at 10 mana now. Uh, Jason's up at 19. Um, one mana each for their Battle Forge, two mana on the Libro. So, I mean, it's... I would say Jason has kind of the... the whatever he wants to do, he can do. And uh, Jack's kind of a little constricted, but honestly, I think he's in a good spot to do most of the curses and yeah. sort of react the way he wants to. I mean, at the end of this turn, if Jack, if Jason doesn't deal with this curse or this idol, he's gonna, yeah, he's gonna be at half health. That's gonna be brutal. And I, I don't know if Jason's gonna try to run away here or what he's gonna do, but um, you know, if he's not gonna deal with this idol, I think that's gonna be problematic for him. I mean, his creature's not suffering for it, but the, yeah, the the one thing that needs to die is the mage. And he's got to take care of that here. Hmm. I, I feel like Curse Game is so strong right now. I think whoever made the Lieber art had a sense of humor for some sort of buck teeth. It's kind of, <laughs> it's kind of funny. 
some stretch skin and buck teeth, you know. And it gets real teeth on the book? Like, someone actually, like, put real teeth on the book itself? Or do you think yeah, it's, like, I mean, a... I'm pretty sure it's supposed to be a real face that's been stretched Like, the actual, out. like, how Libros... Yeah. Or ne- Necroma... Ne- Necroma... I forget Necronomicon? The name. Necroma... Yeah. Isn't that supposed to be what the Libro basically is? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, back in medieval times, they would put leather-bound yeah. books, and, you know, it's just a yeah, exactly. human leather. Yeah, it's gross. <laughs> <laughs> I just find it interesting that they put eyes on it, too, and stuff like that. It's kind of disgusting when you think about it. It's a gross book. I can see why it's cursed. Yeah, I'd curse it, too. <laughs> or maybe... That he put a cursed knife on it, which is what that art did. <laughs> I love that art. Stabbed the book with the with the cursed knife. I love how his little like uh, weasel guy is like just looking at the item, just like, dude, put it down, man. You know, <laughs> stop, stop. <laughs> Can't put it down. It's stuck to me. <laughs> not, not in this game. I guess it kind of is actually. Like he sort of like throw it away, and it just dies you know <laughs> yeah that beastmaster looks really surprised never run into that before that's why you're still in the academy yeah, boy right. although i i don't know if i'd ever curse light him that knife it seems like kind of a waste of mana yeah <laughs> you know? i mean if you're only you're playing academy then that's what you got yeah um, right i guess it's sort of like all right man Honestly, I would never even play the knife. <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, Kajara's probably better. Uh, the thing I don't like about the knife is that you have to act with your mage first. Yeah, that's fair. And then you can act with an animal that you've buffed, and it's so easy to yeah. deal with the buffed animal after the fact. Well, oh, we got Moloch's Torment coming out here. Well, that's what a, uh, a vampiric sword hey. is for now. Elemental Cloak. All right, so clearly Jack Smack is going for the anti-fire game, which makes sense against a warlock. Mm-hmm. Um, Moloch's Torment is... I mean, Jason's kind of playing the same game Jack is with this, I'm going to ping you for damage every round. Um, He's just not doing it as well. Yeah, but... <laughs> I mean, Necro's probably going to benefit a little bit more out of this. You know, it doesn't get affected by idle, any of that he stuff. He moves, too, with his warlock yeah, first he, turn. He's Interest. trying to recover here, and that's... Can he deal with the idle? And I think moving down with the golem is going to be important for that. Interesting. Well, he just doesn't want to take burn damage, I see. That's that's fine. Yeah, I don't blame him for, for retreating with that. He's saying, all right, bring your golem up here if you want to really kill him. Otherwise, he's going to survive. It also makes me the skeletal wonder. Minion. Interesting. Well, now he's not going to take much of any damage with his creatures. And I still think it's the right thing to do to move the golem down and deal with the yeah. I is. think it's the best move, honestly. I um, he's clearly opening this up for the idol to be unguarded. You might as well go here. Yeah, he's going to do that. Okay. The burns. I does it. Only affect creatures? Yeah, yeah it, it only creatures. affects creatures. So, I mean, your best bet is just start wailing on this idol. And you won't kill it right away, uh, but you'll no. kill it eventually. Why? Oh, he's going to guard. Hmm. Why? <laughs> I, this idol is really seriously cramping his style. And if he's going to take the magma golem out, he's going to have to move creatures in, right? So you might as well go wail on the idol and let the burns deal with anything that's coming in to deal with the what's, golem. What's I mean? What's the point of keeping the golem here? Like, Necker's gonna move one, and then the golem's gonna have nothing. Nothing to do. You know, like. I would totally move it to the idol. Yeah. And if the Necker moves down to guard the idol, then you get burn damage. Yeah, exactly. And and then he's also farther away from, you know, cursing your mage. It lets your mage have a little bit of breathing room and. Yeah, I mean, I totally think he's going to dispel the ghoul rot this turn. Ah, he might as well just yeah. might as well just hit the idol next turn. Yeah, I, I totally agree with you with the, with the magma golem. All right, uh, regardless, Jack is going to advance. He's probably going to curse the uh, opponent here. Mm, yeah, he's, he's going to punch because that's his main action. 
So he probably doesn't have two curses planned. He just wants to do the one. Well, bear strength. He does have a bear strength. <laughs> that was the, Interesting. Uh, the first enchantment he put down. Um, huh. Getting two damage through, which, you know, it's okay. That would be really funny is if he had a melee attack spell right now. <laughs> so the thing about a necromancer doing a high jump kick is hilarious. And we are going to see a curse go down. Is it a curse, Jason. though? Is it a nullify? Mm, that would actually be interesting, too. Uh, my guess is... Well, I don't want to guess. All right, regrowth spell. Okay. Okay, this is a cool counter. Um, it counters the ghoul rot, which is good. All so, the more reason to go kill the idol of pestilence, yeah. in my mind. So if it is a unholy reversal, it could be a poison blood. Um, regardless, we'll find out during the next upkeep, I'm sure, if it's one of those two. Oh, man. And so this golem's going to do nothing. Like, it no. would have been better just to punch itself if it was going to do anything. Yeah. Because the counter strike on the Necromancer is kind of worthless because he's got fire minus four. Yeah. Yeah, right? Exactly. I, I Yeah, I would have definitely have gone to attack the idol because the idol is going to cause you problems. I mean, even just moving up to kill the priest isn't bad. No. Okay, poison blood. Poison blood, yeah. Um, so Gura Poison well, Blood counters the regrowth belt. He's going to take three damage during upkeep. And now he is pretty much at half health. He's getting close to 20 damage. And that's a scary part, part to be at. With a 20 damage with a poison blood on. Yeah. Right? And a necromancer that has 17 mana. And the good thing is, thing is, he has twenty-two mana. So if he has counters to this, which he knew he was versing a curse mage, so purge, dispels, uh, you know, things like that, then he's ready for it. You know, he sh he should be at least. But well, he still has see. the enchanter's wardstone to deal with. Ah, yeah, that's true. So he'll use all that extra mana that he got from these mana flowers power to counter that. Hmm. Looks like they're taking a small uh, this break. Is, this is something that, that kind of bothers me a little bit, though, is that the Necromancer is situationally better at cursing than the Warlocks are. Just because of that poison immunity. Yeah, I mean, it could be argued that, you know, the Necromancer is better at poison curses. So maybe we need more non-poison curses that are better. But, I mean, you know, Warlock does have ring of curses. I guess you know like it's yeah i guess you get them for cheaper if you do them one at a time but i mean you can also curse weave stuff which you know hasn't mattered this game but you know you get them back i yeah, I, I, the I know fact you that mean. you cannot he cannot keep the necromancer from healing right now it, it is a little weird also keeping himself from healing it's a little weird to me that you can't poison the blood of a necromancer like i feel like that would be something you can't really gain immunity to you know what i mean yeah, I know a lot of people have issues with with Plague Master, but <laughs> that's fair. Yeah, I mean it's, I could I could see if it was, Necromancer has like poison immunity to non enchantments or something like that. You know, if you, if you want to talk about like, maybe what could have happened or I don't know design stuff there. Right. He's still holding on to this Libro though, which is. I mean, he's he's at seven damage, so he probably he's gonna go up to eight with Molex here. Um, mm -hmm. So honestly, this is probably getting that that point. You know, usually six damage is my point where I go, okay, I need regrowth both to start affecting me because three rounds is a lot of rounds. Um, yeah, but in order to do that, he's gonna have to drop the Libro. So he's got three man on this Libro. So ideally, I think what he does is he casts something with it this round and then drops it, but. We'll have to wait and see what happens on that. Yeah, he only has seven mana. Yeah, so he'd have to do another smaller dude. Um, the fact that his the mana he has on the field is being really effective right now. Yeah. With the exception of his two creatures. His two creatures are doing nothing. I'm not sure what the skeleton's doing, man. I He went down to guard, which I understood that. And then I guess... When the warlock moved away, he's like, I guess I won't take damage from the magma. So maybe he moved to the left to be like, go into the zone magma, 
Then I'll attack you next round. By the way, the magma lost all of its uh, burns, which is so oh sad. Oh my gosh. That's, I did not even... that's really sad, man. But, uh, I mean, it wouldn't have done anything, but still. You know, it had still two burns now. on it, I think. It sure did. Because, you know, ideally with magma golem is one of the things you do is you nuke him. You, like, teleport him in at the end of the final quick cast. And you're like, he's got five burns, deal with it, you know? Yeah, the the burns aren't being kind to Jack to Sir Jason yeah. right now. And here's another curse. Okay, so it looks like uh, leather gloves comes out for Jason. All uh, the armor in the world does not stop your ghoul mm -hmm. rot from working, though. I mean, he's got twenty mana still, so that's not bad. But I'm curious to see is this a nullify? It would make sense because yeah. the one thing that is going to deal with this is going to be a purify or remove curse right yeah right they're holy so let's see if jason would have actually been willing to spend that much spell points oh look jack smack chose not to enable his Volteric shield <laughs> wow <laughs> all right yeah this golem's just going to keep following this necro it, again i don't think it's going to do anything I think yeah. the Necro's just going to move out of the way. And that's going to be it. The dull move of the skills. And so clearly these two creatures are trying to... Well, maybe. I don't know. what he's, I don't even know if he knows what he's doing. I it, think he sees that these creatures are kind of worthless right now. I mean, if you want my opinion, he's trying to hinder. To try to zone yeah, up that the makes uh, sense. idol. Okay, so we're going to see uh, some sort of enchantment go down. Probably another curse on Jack's Oh, Mage Bane. It's another Mage Bane. Ah, another Ouch. Mage Bane. I like that. Okay, so that's going to be another damage that Jason has to take. And he's going to move away. He does um, purify. He's out of his Battle Forge range now. Wow, he's paying 17 mana. Holy well, he cow. has to because yeah, he wants to get rid of poison blood and the ghoul rot. So now at least he can start healing every upkeep. Yeah. But with that mage bane, it's going to sort of counteract that in a unique way. Um, I don't I don't know if Jack Smack knows how um, purify, purify works. works. Probably because he's paying seventeen, and it's kind of a weird amount. But Enchanted Wardstone is affecting both of those, so he's like, right. What so does seventeen eight, mean? You know? Eight plus five is thirteen, yeah. but then you got two more per enchantment, so that has to yeah. be seventeen. Yeah. Um, yeah, and I'm guessing we're going to see Jack move out of this Battleforge zone just so he doesn't take damage from this Magma Golem, which, you know, that's kind of, I think, the reason why you don't see Magma Golem get used a ton, and that he's, he's, he's sort of tough to maneuver. And, um, right. you know, and yeah. Yeah. I mean, and, and if they choose to focus him down, he's going to be gone. Yeah. So you don't want to take him as a Force Master because it costs you. Oh yeah, twelve points. Even though you could keep him where he can do damage, because you can't really keep him alive. And, and you know, people talk about how <laughs> zombie necro is just superior to skeleton, or now mummy, I guess too, because you know you gain lumbering and slow. But is it really that big of a deal? And uh, I think in cases like this magma golem, this is why the faster necro creatures are better, uh, just because you know this skeleton is zipping around this magma golem, just like all right, I'm not gonna get hit by you. And I'm going to sort of zone your mage away from your Battleforge. Um, arguably, you know, Jason wouldn't have moved out of his Battleforge range if these two creatures didn't move here. And uh, Magma Golem just can't keep up. Yeah, one more damage is correct. Yep. He cast two spells this round. Um, so he's just going to take that damage. So, I mean... You know, getting rid of uh, Ghoul Rot and Poison Blood is worth those triple spell points on Purify. Um, just because he got rid of two for the price of one. I like that. Unfortunately, yeah. that enchant is worth something to go down. So it's. Ugh. Well, he's. What is he? Paid six mana? Yeah. Because I of think the Wardstone. So the Wardstone yeah. has sort of paid for itself. Yeah, it's definitely cramped his style in some way. Can I take my Mage Bane back in hand? 
Yeah, it, it, he discarded it by accident. Oh, he probably didn't know what to do with Purify. That makes sense. Yeah. So he's going to put it back on him yep. for zero mana. Yep, yep, yep. So during upkeep, Jack's back, or, uh, Jason's going to heal one, which is nice. Um, we might see an enchantment go down for Jack's Mac, which would be interesting if it was like a poison blood um, or another ghoul rat. Man, if it's another poison blood. <laughs> he's going to move one. Okay, so he's getting out of the magma golem range. Let's see if he actually planned another curse. Okay, he's going to cast something. He's asking for a reveal. <clears throat> I mean, Jason has no mana, so. Right. You know, if he has to, if it's like a tar trap or something, it's. Okay, so it's not not anything like that. So he he planned for this. Oh, he's he's gonna curse the warlock. <laughs> oh my god! If it's a poison blood, I have to clap for for Jack Smack there. It's unholy reversal. Oh my god! So the actions are done. So he's gonna tell him right now. Uh, so that's gonna prevent right. the two regen. So it's gonna prevent two, and yeah, then and it's then, do three oh, damage. then it's gonna do three. So Jason's going to be taking one from the idol and then three from the reversal. So he's going to take four damage during upkeep. Yikes. Wow. Yikes. And I, I agree with you. I think having some sort of like curse of weakness would have been nice just to uh, just ping Keep him for more. Ping. Yeah. Didn't really have the mana, but. Hmm. Let's see. Are there any? Aren't there aren't any cheap creatures that have rot other than the bat, right? You could do the mummy, and you could trigger it off of the. Uh, well, the mummy's the nine, right? Oh, I guess it is. Yeah, it's, it's a little expensive. So um, he hasn't had the mana to cast that. Venomous um, is what eight or nine, I think. Yeah, I, I think seven? he just hasn't had seven. Is venomous seven? Let me, let me check. Maybe, maybe. I know zombie minion is seven. It is seven. That's a that's a cool cost for Venom Zombie. That's a seven. Well, up it's it's an eight up taint, seven up taint, seven up. Oh my gosh, yeah, it's wow. really nice. Yeah. Yeah, Curse of Weakness is probably the easiest. I guess he could do Afflicted Demon, but he can't Libro it. Yeah, that's and the also idol. nine. The idol would work too. I mean, he might as well just cast a, a Plagued Voidwalker. Yeah, from, yeah, you're right. A Libro, and then. Uh, do a damage to it somehow. Jack Smack's gonna keep this uh, Libro, and I don't blame him. He has four mana. He's he's committed. He needs to cast something out of there, I think, and then drop it. Um, yeah. Because now that Jack's at ten damage, that's getting scary. Where your regen isn't, it's not keeping up with the Mage Bane. Uh, paying two more mana to reveal Unholy Reversal. Uh, so he's gonna have a net of five, basically putting Jack up to uh twenty four. That is very dangerously close to dead. Dude. He's just being I, drained, dude. Yeah, if it weren't for all this armor, I would say he's in danger of being bouldered. Yeah. Um yeah, but he has so much armor that it's not it's not that dangerous to be bouldered right now. But I it would be pretty bad. Really enjoy seeing an early reversal. Um I think we've seen a lot of regrowth and regeneration spells, and I'm glad we have a card that sort of punishes it. Just because um, it, I think it's making this game... it's it, This is a good game for it. Where it's showing just how much damage you're getting out of it. You know, basically he netted 5, which yeah. regen 2 is not unheard of. Netting 5 yeah. for 4 mana. That's on par with, like, rock. Um, so, you know, it's it's nice. It's a nice spell. Yeah, um, I still don't like it. <laughs> Um, I mean, the question is, does he run another one? Like, oh yeah, I mean, ideally, is it, is it giving him enough tempo to just run one, or is he going to have to cast it a couple times in a row? Okay, that's to fair. The tempo that he needs. Yeah, I mean, that's that's legit too, and um, I guess that's sort of how it's more balanced there, and that you have to keep playing it. But I mean, I would play this all day against Regen. Well, right, but are you going to plan to run six of them? In yeah, your well, that's that's a, that's a good point. I guess this sort of lets you take less attack spells um, just because of the amount of creatures that have healing in some sort of way, or the amount of mages that run that. 
Like, I don't know if I have seen a book that doesn't run regen, like, maybe, maybe in the last, like, couple years. I'm pretty sure every book I've seen has some regen. Regen is generally usually very efficient. Yeah. Um, it just sits there making your opponent mad at you. Yeah. And it combos well with armor, which everybody yeah. likes running armor. So, yeah, so, so the this fact is, that Unholy yeah. Reversal gets around the armor that yeah. an attack spell would not get around and gets around the regen at the same time makes yeah. it very much a, a tempo spell. Yeah. I, I guess that's ultimately why I like this card. Um, I, I think if you want to counter it and want to still have regen, I think Iron Vine's probably your better choice. Um, just because it reduces the amount of effectiveness of Reversal, plus you get armor out of it. But... Um, I know so many people don't like Iron Vine, so... Well, Regen 1 is twice as bad yeah. as Regen 2. Like, yeah. Regen 2 is just so much better. Yeah, so you have to take damage if you want to Iron Vine, because that's the only way you'll net 2 out of it. Ideally, you'd net 3 or 4 if you're taking multiple hits, but, you know, I, I hear you on that. Yeah... So the Necromancer's at one third health, or two thirds health, one third damage, mm-hmm. and the Warlock is at two thirds damage, one third health, pretty much. So. Yeah, and if Jason prepped a bunch of fireballs to deal with zombies and stuff, he's not going to be able to use those against Jack right now. He's going to have to deal with all of this equipment first, um, which you know is expensive. Like you might be able to explode one, but exploding both of them in one turn is really unlikely plus you want to dissolve one before you explode the other one you know stuff like that yeah hmm well i mean i'm pretty sure jason knew that anybody fighting against him was going to run a That's bunch true. of minus fire so maybe he took a bunch of rocks or something yeah. yeah and then having the armor there is also making those less effective That's true so ultimately if I were Jason, I don't know. I would probably plan to do the curse game, but apparently <laughs> Jack Smack is doing a much better curse game. Well, I mean, that idol is really yeah. being effective here. I mean, it's it's sort of just cramping the style. And again, I think if Golem moved down one originally, we would have already seen a hit on this idol. We would have seen a yeah. second hit here. Probably two. Yeah, it could have been dead by now. It, it could be. At the very least, very close to dead. Um, instead, it's just sort of like lumbering its way over here. The um, we're in turn nine. When did the Idol of Pestilence went down? Turn, turn two. Two. So it has done seven damage. Yeah. It's not That's a lot. Significant. That's a lot. And the fact that you have to spend mana to still kill it. Yeah, brutal, man. And it looks like Jack is taking his time here. So is Jason. Um, More leather. Yeah, Jason being outside of the Battleforge range is probably cramping his style a little bit. Um, There's a leather helmet going down. Um, First time this is probably being used. Our first tournament I think this is getting used in. But um, There's the Cloak of Shadows. Yeah, so he has to quick cast that, which... I'm sure he would have loved that out of the Battle Forge, but right. you know, he's being zoned out back into his mana flower garden here, so I like the Cursed Shadows. I think it's cool. You're gonna basically make him pay for Chains of Agony in order to actually do damage or curses to you. Now, if um, that's an enfeeble, that would be good. Enfeeble to great. Oh, so much damage. So much damage. So he's gonna take two more. He's getting in that. Yeah. 10 range is at 11 left yikes mage bane is so 12. effective it's so ridiculously how how effective mage bane is yeah and you know this is the second one we've seen so he's like i'm going to stick this on you you're going to take damage uh he's gonna move in two to hinder him and um interesting I mean, and, and, he can move. and then he can also use his full action next round to heal so that was a good choice i think Magnumon's going to advance. I would have waited <laughs> with the Magma Golem. Yeah. And everyone is leaving this zone, I'm sure. Uh, the question is, can Jack Smack leave? 
Is this going to be Tar Trap? Force Hold? I don't know. <laughs> Force Hold? No, I mean, it's, it's probably some sort of Enfeeble or something like that is my guess. It could be an Agony, I guess. To deal with the Bear Strength. Yeah, I would... He's going to take a damage, take him leaving here. What is he doing? Oh, Enfeeble. Okay, so it is going to be an Enfeeble. So, I mean, like, he doesn't want him to move. So he's going to take... He's going to be slow here, and he's going to take a damage from moving. So that's... It's good for the golem. Well, yeah, it's too late, though. Yeah. Right. I know what you mean. I mean... Quick cast, that's probably poison blood. Or another reversal. A ghoul rat. Another ghoul rat. <laughs> also a Dang. good choice. Man, this ghoul rat, if he does another reversal next round or something like that, I it, it's basically over. Like, it... It's looking really good for Jack Smack right now. Jack Smack's gonna take more Mage Bane damage. Yeah, Jack Smack is at thirteen damage though. I mean, yeah. I mean, Jason has he's gonna have what eleven mana. So both of these guys have five armor on. It's gonna be rough for for Jason to make a comeback here. I think just because he he's low on mana. Now that he has the Curse of Shadows on, or Cloak of Shadows, uh, he's going to have to move, you know, within one of Battle Forge if he wants that. Well, I mean, he could do it this next yeah. turn. Yeah, he could. God, but he has to uh, deal with Mage Bane, too. <laughs> oh, yeah. man, this, this game. Curses make you just, like, feel so bogged down. I mean, a lesser teleport and a move, too after yep. everything else has gone would work out just fine. Yeah. I think. If you're going to lesser teleport, probably do it in the quick cast just so you don't have to deal with the priest getting a damage on no. you. No, I'd wait. You'd wait, really? Okay. Yeah, well, the priest has to get through five armor. Well, it, it can deal, it can ping for one. Is what oh, I'm it saying. could ping for one. You're yeah. right. It, uh, I don't know if I would do it, though, because okay. then you're broadcasting that you're not hindered anymore, so all the priest is going to do is move in and hit you. And then you can just move one. Oh, I see what you're saying. That makes sense. So what you want to yeah. do is get away from the necromancer, so you wait as long as possible before oh, just man. getting the heck out of there. That's such a rough game. I mean, let me say that because he's so close to death. Like, he's not so close. I guess he'll probably survive another two rounds, but... Man, I don't know. It's rough. Yeah. He's going to ping with Molochs. No, he's not. Oh, Jack Smack's asking him if he's going to ping with Moloch. And Jason says no. He's like, spend your mana. Come on, do it. Because <laughs> um, he's got to spend 10 mana to get rid of Ghoul Rot. Jeez. Oh, it's so brutal. And again, I think if this golem was just sitting here wailing an idol, it would look a little better better for him. I mean, well, it would have saved him three or four damage, maybe. Mm. Yeah. But, yeah. I don't know. Three or four damage might be all that he needs. I mean, I don't know. Exactly. It's This is this is one of those crisis moments where it's very tough to sort of counter what's going on. And we see that he has taken, what, ten... 12 damage from the cursed item this game? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so if he had just dropped the Libro, yep. he would be at zero damage right now, pretty much. And again, I don't... And I he think hasn't he needs, used it. He needs to use it and drop it. Like, that's what he needs to do. But he just, he's just he been playing this curse game. So, I don't know. Like, he's basically trading two life or two damage for one mana. That's rough. I don't know if he wants to use Libra because he's got this magma golem on him too. That's true. The it magma wants golem is gonna. Do it wants something. a target, you know. <laughs> right. I don't know. I Tricky. I dig this game. Let me just say that right now. I, I think this game is actually. Really you know what would be a great move by Jack Snack right now? Hmm. 
to put a wall between those two mana flowers. Oh, interesting. So that Jason has to go down yeah. if he's going to do anything. Yep. And if he goes down, you can, you can make wail it. on him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can hit him for one, or you can make it so that he's in the zone with his own magma golem. Yeah. <laughs> Burn himself alive. I mean, yeah, I, I agree with you there. I mean, clearly you have a bunch of different curses that's going to ping you for damage, and anything to sort of, you know, use a golem against the their own mage. And, is and really it guarantees nice. that he's going to be within range one next turn. Man, magma golem is tough to use, man. This is one of those cards that's just like very yeah, tough to pull it, off. What does that cost? It costs fifteen. And so, if that had been a flaming hellion or a dark pack slayer, yeah. Um, that that would have done, especially if it was a blood reaper. It's what six six spell points from pretty much for every arena mage. That's that's crazy. Yeah. And they, the uh, yeah the um, what's it the the dark pack slayer would have been wailing on the ma the necromancer. Yep. That would have and... been it would have been a different game and healing yeah. Jason. And healing him, yeah. If yeah. it was a blood reaper. Huh. Now, yeah, he would be down to what thirty three health or thirty four health or something, but. He'd probably be only at twenty damage at, yep. at the most. Yeah, there, there were some poison blood turns there, but still. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Plus, you have other curses you can then put on, put on him to heal more and stuff like that. Right. I mean, you could have done mark for death or demonic bloodlust, even demonic like, bloodlust. Yeah. Especially against a necromancer, like or what's the uh, the pact one that gives you melee one and, and heals another. Yeah. Another oh, skeletal one. knight coming out. Yeah, and, and this is what I think he should do: is just cast something out of it, drop it, and getting a big dude like this. Um, I love the play first off, and he is going to eternal servant it. So, so if it dies to burns, he can get it back, and then he's going <laughs> to curse again. Oh my gosh! I like this play. Um, I think he should drop Lebo, start retreating, or not retreating, but maybe not retreat at all. But uh, regardless, let regrowth start working. Because um, that you mage bane is going to proc. Yikes. The uh, the reason to have that cleric is so that you can always go last with your mage. Oh, it's a cheap spell. It's not a bad creature. And yeah, that, that makes sense. Maybe that's why he's doing that. Huh. He's winning the curse game that way. And there you go. He's going to heal one more. So it's healed two damage so far. Targets disperses mage main. Okay. All right. So that means he's not moving, uh, which means he's not gonna. Well, I guess he can teleport himself, but. Yeah, he could teleport if he wanted to. He is going to teleport himself. Boom. Yeah, you're you're a little bit ahead of me. Um, is he going to pay six? Yeah, he pays six. All right, I will pause for a minute. All right, so he's he's going to put himself in front of this um, Battle Forge, which I think that's why he did that. But the question is, Jack Smith got a curse off. What is that curse? I'm guessing it's Poison Blood. Yeah. Yeah, I think so, too. Run away from the magma golem. <laughs> I love how he moved down one over. I uh, interested why he did that instead of moving up one. Maybe to get the priest in a uh, position. What is he doing? Golem's gonna punch himself. Okay, he doesn't get a doesn't burn. Doesn't get any burns. That's unfortunate. That's weird. I guess he's sort of like being a pillar here, saying, "Hey, don't move this way if you're." Um. If you're going to move your mage. There's some weird positional stuff going on in this game. <laughs> Magma Golem causing problems again. Yeah, and if you've never versed it before, you're not going to really know how it works. You know? <laughs> Check. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's an interesting card. Interesting enough, I... It's interesting that it can get a burn, but it's 
if it was flame immune, but the actual card says place a burn, would that override the the rule? Like you know how like cards override rules and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I it's think. Kind of interesting. But that, that would be the only way you could put burns on it, though. Yeah, you couldn't do fun stuff like punch yourself and lash it. <clears throat> yeah, you couldn't attack it. You couldn't yeah. uh, fire weave it. Yeah, exactly. It's more fun this way for sure. <clears throat> All right, is, are we going to see that Libro die? Man, this would be the time to drop it. Honestly, you're almost at half damage. Just drop it. You know? Right. I wonder if Jason's ever done like an Adromalix touch tactic on... Magma the magma. like sat there with like a lash and just like kept adding birds on him and you know stuff like that I think that's a complete waste of action <laughs> fair enough man fair enough it puts a burn on itself already people are going to want to kill it already yeah you might as well just play another fire creature yeah that's fair there it is poison blood boom great play out of jack smack here <clears throat> showing the power of poison with the necromancer uh, so that's going to put... That is three poison bloods? Yep. Okay. And that and that's going to put... Uh... Is it three? Is it two or three? It might have been two. No, it's two mage brains, two poison bloods, yeah. two cool bloods. Yeah, that's right. So let's see. Jack's going to go... Or Jason's going to go up to plus three. So he's going to be at 32. Yikes. He is going to drop the Libro. <clears throat> Smart choice. Yeah, he got his big dude out. Didn't even take damage from this golem. So it's just sort of beneficial. He's not even going to pay life to bring it back. He's like, I don't uh, need this anymore. Yeah, I don't blame him there. He, although if he did, it wouldn't be too bad, I think. No, I mean... I yeah, guess... Hmm. Mm -hmm. What is... What? What? What, just ha what just happened there? It looked like it auto rolled, but I don't know why he rolled again. That didn't make any sense to me. Um. Oh, maybe he never added it at the end of the phase, so he just did it again. Oh, and it rolled a zero. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. I think, yeah, whatever. I wasn't paying attention, but I'm going to assume they did it right, because yeah. it didn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> Regardless, this map going was two on it. Uh, looks like the priest and the skeletal minion, they're trying to get in a positional game to try and corner again this, this warlock that's teleporting around. Uh, this knight's probably just going to either be teleported in for the win or just play that game as well, just kind of chasing you around. Um, and the question is, is Jack going to start dealing with these curses? Because he's kind of stuck now. Um you know, having Enfeeble and Chains of Agony makes you not want to play this game against them with Cloak of Shadows. Um, I mean, I guess the Deathlock wouldn't be bad right now. Um, yeah, I mean, I might hold on to it That's for fair. final quick cast. That's like, fair. if you see him remove the poison yeah. blood, dispel okay. the poison That's... blood, then then you drop it. But in the meantime, you're healing with regrowth yourself. Yeah, so. you might as well get as much benefit. You're right about that. What you don't want is him to start regening and staying away from you. And yeah. Yeah, so it's weird, right? So basically, Jason's in this weird situation where he wants to stay away from the Necro because he doesn't want more curses at him. But at the same time, the Necro is just going to keep healing while you're just taking more damage. And, right. you know, being at 11 mana, it's going to be tough to take out that idol and deal with the Gorot and the Poison Blood. And, you know, the clock is ticking here. He's got six damage left. So 
I mean, ideally, I guess you take out the poison blood, so you can at least take one damage every round instead of three. Right. And then you take out the Gura, and then you hope, see. hope there's no death lock, you know? <laughs> right. I like, mean, it's rough, man. <laughs> you gotta take the idol out, too. I mean... Yeah. Yeah, that's another problem as well. I mean, if he can get a Mage Wand off of this Battle Forge and then start dispelling... That would work. He is going to ping Jack Frank for one with the uh, Malik. Which means that he could Mage Wand and dispel Poison Blood right now. Yep. Because he's got three there, so it's going to be five. So it's going to cost two. He'll be at eight. And so it's five plus two. Yeah, he can he can do that. That's pretty much his actions. Probably run away or something. Fire Shaper Ring. Oh, right. yikes. He wants to get aggressive. Maybe he just wants to use this mana while he's here. Makes me think he doesn't have a Mage Wand. That's what I, was yeah, he probably doesn't this. have a Mage Wand. Um, Which, I mean, if you're going to play an aggressive mage, you don't need a Mage Wand, generally. Yeah. Problem is, he ran into some problems getting over there. Mm-hmm. Man, this is this is brutal for Jason to watch. Man, I'm just sort of like, ugh. Jack it's Smack always just, hard. Jack Smack just in control of this right now. All right, we're in action phases. I'm guessing he's going to use his mage first. I maybe. He doesn't have to. I mean, it should still be a moving card. Yeah, he's going to move away. He doesn't okay. want to get hindered. Is... We see another Purify Dispel. All right, he's going to Dispel the Ghoul Rot. So okay. he's only taking one damage. Okay, that's a good move. Yeah. I dig that. Uh, paying again for that Wardstone. Uh, this Wardstone just doing tons and tons of extra little mana damage. Yep. So Wardstone has cost Jack Smack or Jason like a whole channeling turn. Yeah, pretty much. Okay, so the Gurak goes away. But the poison blood stays. He's I guess Jason's just saying like, okay, can I get back into this longer gameplay now? Like, is it possible for me to do this? Um it's very rough, especially for a Dark Mage. <clears throat> it looks like we're going to see a double move down. That's kind of strange. That makes me wonder why. He wants to get away from Jason. Alter skills. Eh? <laughs> he doesn't have mana for it. No, he doesn't. But I, I still understand why he moved down. Maybe he's going to heal off the Necro. Right. Because <laughs> the Necro needs more damage on it. Right. <laughs> Necromancer spends quick cast. Dispelling on Gulra or Mage Bane. <laughs> yep. That's a long time coming. He probably didn't have the mana until now. Um, I'm guessing we'll see him move down... He should take a damage from that if he didn't. Um, he did. He just did. Yeah, he'll move down because he wants to get in range of this battle forge again. Interesting enough, Jason is now out of range of his battle forge, so that's because of the yeah. of shadows. I don't know if he wanted to use it. He has a ton of equipment on, but it's just a good note on the side here. Mavigolum, just big question marks over what he wants to do. He's putting more um, burns on himself, I guess. He's just... All right, he's got another burn. Put him up to three. Mains is at one armor right now. Yeah, that Skeletal Knight could come in and mess him up. It's getting there for sure. Especially with a Eternal Servant. Means he has Piercing 1. Yeah. Just saying. I, mean, that's, I think that's what I would do. He's, he's, no, he wants to tend to the garden. Yeah. <laughs> He kills it. No, he doesn't. No. Not yet. Oh, Not God. yet. Five damage. I, it's interesting he's going after the mana flower. I don't know if I agree with that. I think he's that. just triangulating. 
uh, yeah. Jason's position. So whichever way he runs, he's going to get a hit off on him. And that's all he really needs is a good hit. You know, just get like three or four crits. Yeah. Uh, Mavilon's going to go up to four burns now. But not hitting anything. Ah, oh, it's so unfortunate to see, man. And again, I, I wonder if he would have moved to the left one. You know, he'd be at three, but now he's in a weird threat position. It makes, you know, Jack have to move around it. I'm and, uh, surprised at how few positioning uh, spells we've seen from Sir Jason if he was yeah. planning to use Magma Golem. Yeah, that's a good point. Lesser teleports probably being one of the more common ones. Um, yeah, so he's out of range to use that. but Force pushes are always good, but, you know. And it's, it is interesting that uh, Jack Smack has basically stayed one creature ahead, one or two creatures mm -hmm. ahead, so that he can always move what he wants to move when he moves. Yeah, that's a good point there. So he can he can move his mage when he wants to move his mage. He can move his other creatures to delay or to get positions that he wants. I mean, when you're playing the curse game, it's really advantageous to be able to go second. <clears throat> And um, looks like uh, Jackson's going to go up to 16 damage from Molox. He's going to, of course, regen 2 and go down to uh, 14. That, that regrowth, man, it's really paying. Paying off. Yeah, he, he would be quite dead soon. Wasn't there a turn back toward the beginning where Sir Jason could have gotten rid of the regrowth yeah he had the uh, dispel wand he definitely could have dispelled it um it makes me wonder if he also if jason just played a bunch of unholy reversals what would have happened i don't know no, it's I probably not super effective helped. but you know it's interesting thinking I just Man, wanna... Two burns falling off of that golem again. <laughs> golem cannot stay burning. Gains two armor by doing that. All right, so Jason's at um, 33 out of 38. Um, still has the poison blood on him, so he's taking just one from the idol. Jack going down to 14. And essentially, Jason, if he moves, he's looking at creatures. Yeah, I mean, creatures he can move. Going to be able to hit him if he moves. He can move to the left one, and that's a safe bet. But otherwise, he's going to be hindered no matter what. Um, assuming the mini wants to move in. Too. Wisp Willow Amulet. Oh man, Jack hasn't played. You can tell Jack hasn't played it for a while because Wisp Willow was kind of the meta when he was playing. And now you just never see it anymore. <laughs> um, well, I mean, it's decent if you're expecting an Eye of bail problem. Oh, totally. Oh, absolutely, man. But I I don't think Jack, or Sir Jason has time for that sort of thing right now. I mean, he got off the Battle Forge for free, so it's just sort of a nice spell to cast. I guess you can switch it out if you want to get the Dispates back. But um, Oh, Altar of Skulls. So he had this plan... And clearly, it probably got thwarted in the beginning by the aggressive battle forge stuff like that. But uh, here it is. Uh, I mean, it's going to take a if long time. If he was going to do this, this is why I would have taken the skeletal knight and attacked the magma golem. Oh, yeah. Because you can get an extra skull on it. Yeah, that's a good point. Now your skeletal knight could have died, but that's another corporeal creature dying. Mm -hmm. You bring it back. You just keep doing Make, it? Well, I don't know if he'd have mana to bring it back at that point, but... Another and enchantment goes down in Jack's mech. Okay. We don't know what it is, though. Nope. Right. Um, I mean, the Altar of Skulls is kind of that... If it gets triggered, it's it's good? I mean, I, I still am not sure I, I like it. What is, how many tokens does it need? Eight? It needs eight. And it can get one around from a cleric. So, okay. I mean... So, in it, eight rounds with no death. <laughs> I mean, ideally, you're like, okay, well, you have finite life. We all have finite life. 
and you're, you're taking two additional damage. So it's like, I guess I like it. But I mean, ideally, you use it against like you know swarms, right? I I wonder if he's just trying to make it so that if Idol of Pestilence goes down, he has a backup way to do damage. Yeah. Because I I think that's why the minion went over there, right? To I could see to that. guard the idol. I could definitely see that. Yeah. I mean, clearly he's and playing then, this. It, and then it was a corporeal creature dying. Poison blood gets dispelled. When the the warlock. Paying seven mana. So he's going to start healing a, a net of one every round. Because that uh, idol is still going to do damage. Yeah. And the skeletons are closing in. This game, man. I like skeletons. I like skeletons oh, I love way skeletons. more than I like. Oh, he's going to move in with the uh, magma golem. Finally, magma golem getting some action. This is a smart move. And he's going to put a burn on it, right? Is it too little too late? Yep, he puts a burn on it. I mean, it could kill this cleric. It and if could. if he kills the cleric, yeah. that would be very good for him. Yeah, essentially the altar's done. For now, at least. Um, Mage Bane has been gotten rid of, so the uh, regrowth is definitely doing stuff. You know, with Enfeeble... Um, Getting away from this golem is not going to be easy. Yep, not anymore. And Unless, uh, I mean, he, no, he's, he's going to be able to do it because Jack Smack has got less. more creatures yeah, on board. He's, he's he always going to go last. That's fair. That's actually a good point. But the Magma Golem can attack the altar at this point. Yeah, I mean, you still take damage so. from chains. So, you know, it's <clears throat> you're going to lose either way, I guess. But um, at least you can not take burn damage. But he's going to take three burns mm. here. Um, let's see. We're in Is he taking phase. three damage. Let's see what happens oh. here. We're in the upkeep. Uh, okay. So let's see. So Jason's going to go down to thirty-two. Jack's going to go down to twelve, and then burn rolls. Right. Hmm. Come on, keep going. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, I guess one of the best ways to use the altar skulls is probably with, like, sacrificial altar, I guess. Right? Yeah, I mean, that would work. You, you just... use it on, like, a... Well, did, did any really cheap dudes come out in the new Necromancer set? Uh, higher bodyguard. Oh my god, you can embalm him. Eternal servant that. And then just keep Keep sac sacrificing, sacrificing him. him for two, so you can get another school every round. That'll probably be your your best bet. So only two damage from these burns. <laughs> oh no! Uh, that means the priest is gonna survive a little bit more. So needs two more damage to die. Um, Jacksmith's gonna go up to fourteen damage. And Jason has a big problem here. He's looking at a uh, a knight at his face. He's going to have an initiative so he can get out. Um, but he's going to have to move twice if he wants to get out of range. And, uh, of course, he has that minion as well. I mean, every critical damage counts here. And uh, the fact that the knight has... The fact that the knight has, you know, piercing one, it matters a little. You know, basically it'll be four armor instead of five. Yeah. Um, Mox so doing he's damage. supposed to get two or three damage through each time he swings, statistically. Yeah, with crits and stuff like that. So, I'll have to wait and see. I mean, I guess, do you save mana for the Eternal Servant? I don't know. I don't know if you do that here. I mean, I guess you might as well just wait and see if you need it. Yeah, I don't think I would save mana. Like you can't use the battle forge then, but I'm not sure. I mean, what he at wants. this point, if he spends time killing the skeleton, he's gonna die to the altar of skulls. Okay, that's a fair point. I mean, I think that you guard with the necromancer after you pray with the priest. Ah, uh, yeah, and, and just make sure that altar lives. That makes sense. Yeah, because you win. Yeah. If that altar gets online. 
with idol and altar on two opposite sides of the yep. battlefield, yep. you win. And he still has Deathlock in belt. hand. Vet belt coming out. There is no reason this necromancer should not just guard for the rest of yep. this. Uh, that's the that's the game. that's what I'm sensing is going to happen here. He's just going to say, "Okay, Golem, do your worst. I've got minus tons of damage." I don't know if the Golem can actually do damage right now to the Necro. I think you burn Ooh, him. I don't know if I would get too close to that Necromancer. Leather helmet. Okay. Oh, he's <laughs> enchanting the Necromancer. <laughs> okay, so he's... Another Mage Main? Could be Mage Main. It could be... So I'm starting to see the positioning spells from, from Sir Jason, so I'm glad that he had them in here. Is it going to be an Agony? No. I mean, he's got bear strength, man. If he chooses to guard, he's going to mess that golem up. Okay. The golem will just attack itself, probably. Yeah, that's fair. That's probably the best way to kill this priest, to be honest. Just push the golem out of the way. He's going to put a, an altar thing. Yep. There we go. And the golem can't kill the altar right now, so it's not really in danger. And Sir Jason passes. I mean, I, I think Jack should just have force pushes or teleports. Just make sure that golem's out of the zone for a while. Double move with the knight. Yeah, this is... You're a little bit ahead of me again. I'm not sure why. <laughs> oh, man. Weird. So, double move with this knight here. And again, this the more that Jason has to spend his force pushes and stuff to get out of the way, the better for Jack. Because that means he can he can sort of just say, okay, you're spending mana and actions. I need to use that to my advantage. Granted, Jason is healing one around, so that's a big deal. I mean, he's going to hit this Battleforge here. He gets two damage. My gun. I don't know how much this Battleforge is really useful anymore, but, you know, might as well. And he's just deciding to stay back with the minions, so that's kind of weird. Yeah. Maybe he's saying, I don't want you to be he... able to get out of range. What is he attacking? He's trying to burn himself. He doesn't do it. Oh, he's attacking himself. Okay. Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Weird. Uh, now it's Jack's turn. He can do whatever he wants. Here we go with the positional oh, spells. What is this? Oh, he's putting the... Yes! I love this play. He's saying, okay, you want to have this Mavigal mess me up? How about it messes you up? Here you go. Hot potato, man. Hot potato. <laughs> I love that play out of Jack. <laughs> that's that's a beautiful play, man. You know what I'd do next round? Hmm. First quick cast, drain life. Oh my god, that'd be so good. You know what I would do next round? I just move up and guard. That's all you gotta do. Move that up and guard. So... And then first quick cast, drain life for the win. That would be so good, man. <laughs> yeah, it looks... Oh, he had tar trapped. He can't move. Uh, does he have the mana to pay for that? No, he did pay for it. Okay, cool. Tar trap. Can't guard. Okay, that was a that was a solid play out of Jason to target. So he's just that. not gonna do anything. Okay. Yeah, I mean he's got four mana, so I guess he could have. I, I get he probably has a curse in his hand. That's what he has. So with fourteen mana available to him, he could lesser teleport and then drain life. But that takes two actions instead of just first quick cast. That's still really good. All right, so we are looking at this Madmagum. Uh, once again, looking like it's going to hurt the Warlock. Yeah. And, you know, at 32 damage, going down to 31, that's a little dangerous. Why does he only have 15, man? Oh, he, has, he channels 11. Why does yeah. he channel 11? He's got two uh, flowers. Oh no, that's the other guy. Yeah. Never mind. You good? I'm looking at the wrong person. You good? No, he did channel eleven. Jason? The wisp, the wisp below amulet should have given him one. Jack smack. Jack smack. Oh, did he? I don't think he got it. 
Did he not? Oh, he, I don't think he did either. Yeah, because you have to manual that, don't you? I don't know Why? if you do. It used to be automated, didn't it? I don't think so. I used to just put my channel up, I thought. Wait, let's see. It looks like it's still doing stuff. Removing one dissipate from tar trap. Gains one oh. mana from by removing dissipate. Yeah, so we got it. Oh, okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, three damage from the magma golem. Dude. <laughs> three damage. Three he's getting. Life. He's like getting the burns as it hits his mage. That's so unfortunate. That is so unfortunate, man. <laughs> Dude. <laughs> okay, well, um, yeah, I mean, I think he has a lot of options here to kill Jason. Like, the Skeleton Knight is in a position to do some decent damage. And, like, essentially, wherever Jason moves, he's going to have to, like, just get out of there if he wants to do anything, which that, of course, just buys time for the Altar of Skulls. Yeah. I mean, like, it's... Jack Smack is really looking good here. Let me just say that, man. <laughs> uh, Warlock only has five. Yeah, like, left. holy cow. I, There's an idol of pestilence. I'm sensing and the an altar of skulls on its way. Sensing curtains here. Um, I mean, even a Deathlock here would be really bad for Jason. I mean, he could move up and drain life. Uh, okay, that's true. Mox Armor's going to trigger. No damage on a Jack. And Jack, that regrowth is just paying so much. Like, he's he's able to recover a good amount, and then he takes it back, but that's fine. He's like, I'm staying consistent. You're taking a little bit of damage, so I'm netting here. And this is, this is where we see the Plague Master ability just outstripping, right? Yeah. It's really good. It is really good, man. Man, it really looks like Sir Jason has built this book around Magma Golem, and it is unfortunate that it hasn't really done anything. Again, if he was looking for for brutes, I'm sure that he's looking to, you know, deal the direct damage onto the brutes, stuff like that, not get the um, right. uh, the extra two dice from Bloodthirsty, and there's just none of that to be seen. You know, it's just a bunch of quick little dudes running around hitting you with their their femurs. The laughing minions. Yeah, right, exactly. I love Skeleton Minion, man. That art, so good. It's like, where'd you get this femur? Who knows? Is it your own femur? Maybe. You know, it's magic. <laughs> so ridiculous. Oh, that's funny. I'm watching this game as you, apparently. Oh yeah. Because I just I just peeked at what he put on his Battleforge, because I wanted to see if peak works. Oh, and it says Koshay did. That's yeah, funny. It says <laughs> at. Yeah, that's funny, man. All right, we're in deployment phase now. Let's see if Jack chooses to get anything out of this. Still think you should lesser teleport. Lesser teleport, drain life. Wham. <laughs> no to place. All right. Okay. Is he gonna quick cast? 14 rounds so far. Uh oh, question. Ruh row. Oh, well, that's not too bad either. <laughs> <laughs> well, that would be that would be the ultimate hot potato game, right? <laughs> Just like, all right, you got it. Now you're in the oven. The, on the oven of s bones. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, 
I mean, being walled in with a Skeletonite 2 is probably going to get all sorts of crits. Or at least say, like, okay, you're going to have to deal with him in some sort of way. Uh, granted, he doesn't have the uh, necessarily the mana to bring him back, but still, it buys him some run. Oh, man. Well, there, there's a good move, too. That's fine. And that's... That's that's kind of the older way to do it too, I think. You know, the wall of bones stuff. Like but people train are... life is like so yeah, much finesse. It, it's also yeah, it's elegant. I agree with you on that. I checked that. He didn't. <laughs> he didn't what? Uh, he didn't. It, it's sometimes in Atiyam when you do upkeep, it says that you manually recover two light damage, and then uh, it'll say you did it, and then sometimes it doesn't. But like when it says that, it just it only happens once. It's it's kind of weird. So he didn't actually read it twice. That's good. It just said he did, even though sometimes it doesn't say that. I don't know. It's like it's really weird coding that just like indicates sometimes and sometimes it doesn't. It's like they probably like updated it, and then like, it's I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm not going to try to explain it. <laughs> Looks like we're going to see a death by Magma Golem here if he gets this extendable bone wall. <laughs> that, would be, that would be poetic justice as well, to be fair. You'll die <laughs> by your own fire creature. <laughs> Man, still, it feels like Sir Jason was fighting a losing battle the entire game. Yeah, like, that's kind of how the curse game feels, right? Like, you always just feel like you're like, oh, I'm getting this terrible effect on me that I just can't deal with. And it's not killing me now, but it's just, like, slowly killing me over time. Is walling him in? Walling him in. That is one wall for six mana and a second wall for six mana plus level, yep. which is 13 total mana. Which, you know, we're talking about upheaval, great spell to deal with this kind of thing. Um, I mean, I think the skeletal wall, the wall bones, has probably been one of those, this wall's really good. Like, tons of people that use walls use this spell. Have really been seeing it a lot lately. Like, ADMW2, you saw some wall usage, but not a lot. Um, glad to see it's sort of it's still in fashion, you know. <laughs> Ooh, another tar trap. Cannot take actions. Nice. That's a cool move. So basically, saying, all right, I need to break out of this. You don't do anything for a while while I get out of here. That's got to be eerie. Yeah. The tar trap of skeleton light. Yeah, it might look a little creepy. Like uh, some Thor Ragnarok when he's you know. When Thor is trapped on the ship in that big metal thing, you can imagine it's like that. I haven't seen that movie. Oh man, I I like superhero movies, so you know I read comics as a kid and everything. So I see everyone, man. Uh, anyway, Magma Golem dealing three damage. Oh my uh, gosh, it's crazy. It's burn won't actually affect the Wall of Bones, so he has to punch his way out. Lava hey, claws. Look, he punches his way out. All right, he got almost, he got seven. Almost. So is that is that ten? Yeah, that's and, ten total. Um, so the question is, how much damage is Golem gonna do? <laughs> no, his Golem already attacked. Exactly. Like, oh yeah. Oh no, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, fair. Hey, dead Battleforge. All right, and that minion did its job here. I mean, he just... like Battleforge was gonna do anything for the rest of the game. Something about a femur just chipping away at a forge you know so i funny. don't think i think the femur would lose <laughs> I know, right? right i I'm mean pretty sure against like steel it would just piece like... of bone against some metal <laughs> metal is definitely tougher than steel man <laughs> um looks like uh jack can try to guard but he can't because he's trapped in tar and now okay, three, the burns. three burns three and burns three burns well, he's already going to be at 34, right? Because of idol? 
Uh, he'll heal one, so he'll be at 32. Oh, 32. Yeah. Right, right, right. All the way around. Um, but that's only six damage, which he could die here. It is entirely if it, possible. If it rolls max. Tar Trap is gone for the Necromancer yeah, now? Yeah, Necromancer's free here. Which, you know, he spent three spellbook points on it and six mana, and it prevented some stuff. You know, certainly for this knight, I think the reason why he's alive... Well, we don't know if he's alive yet. But uh, the reason why he's not absolutely going to die right now is probably because of that Tar Trap. I, I dig Tar Trap. People that are using that. Very cool. Oh, man. I had... Uh, if people have seen the latest Tuesdays with Puddin' Head know that I had a crocodile just removed from the fight oh, yeah. for, for the crucial turns because oh, of Tar yeah. Trap. Really nice, really man. Good. It, it really makes good. me wonder if people oh, are... four burn. Yikes. Oh, my God. So that means uh, Jason's going to go to 36 out of 38. And uh, Golem oh. still has two burns on him. He needs to get out of there, man. <laughs> Holy cow. Meantime, this Ultra Skulls is at three counters. It needs uh, another five rounds of buildup. Sort of just that, all right, you dealt with this. Now you got to deal with this. Now you got to deal with this. Like, it's... Jack's Mac is just layers of layers of just, you know, making sure you die. I dig it. Wow. Six I dig it. armor for both sides. No, no, five armor for uh, Jack's Mac, six armor for Sir Jason, and the armor is doing nothing to save him. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all the leather in the world isn't going to save you from curses. And I think that's why the curse game is so strong. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, because yeah, I mean, it's... the the saturation you can get with it, the number of copies you can take to counteract any removal, is well, what I mean by saturation. Yeah. And then you don't have to deal with half of the stuff they bring for protection. And, and I actually like that that's a part of the game, just because if armor stopped everything, you know, it, it would be oh, it'd be too strong. That's. What a, <laughs> oh my gosh. I love this play. Reassemble. Uh, six dice. Only it's beautiful. Five, but All right. still. I mean, five damage is. It's going to be more than your golem attack. So that means you have to spend an attack spell if you want to move out of your golem. Or you could, I guess, melee it and then force push it or something. But, you know, he has to get out of this zone. Like, <laughs> he has to, man. And yeah. most likely this golem's not going to kill it. Right. It's going to put it up to, what, nine? Gets Eight. one below. <laughs> no. Oh, my God. So he's got four more damage left. And again, like his punch his punch may not even kill it. If he's got... I mean, he could, he could Eagle Claw Boots and climb out. Yeah. He could. That's why I like Eagle Claw, man. I remember when every book had Eagle Claw. Uh, yeah, this minion's just like, all right, man, you want to get out of here? I'm waiting with my femur. It took down a battle forge, man. Oh <laughs> all right, he's, he's got to do four damage on four dice. He gets two damage. <laughs> oh, no. That is so terrible. <laughs> this skeletal knight sitting here just laughing, man. <laughs> just like, you will never escape. Oh. Uh... Uh, so apparently if you peek at a card, you can always just see it by highlighting it. Oops. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> Magma Golem sitting here like, I just, I, I exist to get, I be, I'm a hot potato. <laughs> I love Jason's comment here. It's getting hot in here. Yeah. I love how the, the, Necromancer. the fire mage says it's getting hot. That's, oh my gosh! I mean, he's gonna be at thirty-five. You talk, with three burns and an idol and to deal with. You, you know. talked about elegance with drain, drain life. This is this is poetic in its own way. Uh, this, is, <laughs> this is just torture. Yeah. So um, let's see. We're gonna have three burns on the magma golem. Yeah, Jason, you just said this will be at thirty-five out of thirty-eight. So if each burn does one damage, which statistically it will, this should be over here, but it might not be. Well, statistically, this game, these burns will do six damage. <laughs> right? So true. Because we're down a few damages. Poor on these burns. Uh And Tar Trap is going to go away here. 
So the knight's going to get a hit. And it's, Unless, and it's Jack's yeah. initiative. So. That's true. <laughs> I like how the flower's not taking damage, just sort of happy here. He likes the heat. Yeah, right? You know? Everything's on fire and the flower yeah. doesn't care. <laughs> hey. And uh, there it is. Four damage from those burns. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what a game. Gee the jeez. Well, that was an ADMW league match between, and this is group A, right? Yep. It's group A? Yep. Yeah. Great so game got... from both of them. Yeah, that was uh, that was a game. What I like is um, every time that new cards come out, uh, you see them in tournaments. Like these leather helmets, um, they're new. Like they got put in like two weeks ago, and I just like how every character, or everyone's just sort of taking them. You know, <laughs> Jack reveals a, a brood. He's like, I do have brutes, but I didn't play them. <laughs> nice. I don't know. Any any final thoughts on the game before we uh, close it out? No, I uh, that was some this is a good play. Altar of Skulls, then, huh? It's a thing now. I mean, apparently. it was playing that long game, man. I and, I dig it. Yeah, Battleforge Necromancer, just to keep yourself alive. You know. Yep. It's that was good. Definitely unique necro. Like you don't see that out of. You know, he did have a lot of mages. And he did have Deathlock. Yeah, he, he clearly had more game in him going on. Yeah, he had a Gauntlet of Strength. I'm just going through these cards really quick in case anyone wants to uh, and pause this it. Will sacrifice. If anyone wants to pa pause it and look at the cards, that this is Jason's and a deck. Soul here. Harvest. He had an upheaval. But Sir Jason did not have an upheaval. Oh, Jason had a Fire Elemental. That's cool. Fire Elemental would have been good. Yeah. Um, He had the Pillar, too. Wow. Um. Anyway, we'll close it out here. Everyone that joined us, thanks for watching. Uh, we have all the VODs on a playlist on our YouTube. Also on the Arcane Wonders forum. Uh, we have a list of all the games there. Um, if you haven't joined the Discord or haven't played on Octagon, feel free to jump in, man. Um, on the Arcane... Uh, uh, on the Mage Wars community Discord, we have, you know, ways you can install Octagon if you haven't done it yet. It's not that hard once you get the hold of the hang of it. You know, two, three games you're in. So uh, if you're interested in playing this game, come check it out. Otherwise, uh, everyone that's in the league, uh, I've been loving the game so far. And uh, congratulations to Jack here. Maintaining your win streak in tournament games. <laughs> Nicely done. Um, this is not over for Jason, though. It is uh, round robin, so he can still advance to the next stage. Um, so we'll have to wait until next week to see what, what he brings out. Yeah. All right. Thanks for watching, everybody. Bye-bye.